everybody, welcome. This is Big Anglovich. And this is Rich Outfield. And this is That Gets <coughs> My Goat. That's right. <clears throat> hey, that's my line. We are uh, on our way to see the newest Avengers flick. It's called Avengers 2, The New Batch, right? I don't think there's a two in it. It's just Avengers, The New Batch. Oh, okay. Um, so anyways, yeah, it's a, what, has it been three years? Is that what it's been since the last one? I think three years in, in two days or something like that it will have been three Holy years. Holy crap, I can't believe it's been that long. I can't believe three years ago I fit into this shirt. <laughs> but I'm wearing my Avengers shirt and yeah, it feels like an extra small now. Yeah, well maybe you washed it enough times that it shrunk. Yes, yes that's what happened. Think of it that way. Thank you sir. But anyhow, we are driving toward the theater right now, and I thought, wouldn't it be neat if we did a little pre-game commentary? We're like, what are we going to see today, Mike? It's like, wow, the Steelers have really, really been putting it on the line lately. Okay, again, I, I can't sell that I know anything about sports, so I, I'm, that wouldn't be convincing if I tried. But I thought it would be neat if we talked a little bit about what our expectations for this movie are. Yeah, we've got a few minutes. Our showing starts in 20 minutes. Hopefully, we'll make it there in time. There's a huge traffic jam. Why? What, was on there a the wreck? Freeway. I was don't it know. Ultron? <laughs> it, may, it may have been, or at least a horde of Ultron bots came crawling out of the uh, sewer. I don't know. The Ninja Turtles came out. And, yeah, and so there's a huge traffic jam. So I'm going to turn right here and avoid the freeway. And uh, just go the long way, and hopefully we'll make it to our seats before uh, the lights go out and we can't find them. Hey, let, let me interject one little thing. You know, I complain because I'm old that life is not as good as it once was, and I, I don't like the way things are compared to how they used to be. But one thing that is infinitely better in the 21st century, in 2015, is that we were able to buy our tickets for this movie a couple of days ago and pick our seats so that we don't have to arrive an hour early. We don't have to camp out the night before. We can just arrive right before the movie begins or hell, as the movie begins and we still get our seats. And you know how much pressure and headache and irritation that takes away? It is very nice. Uh... <clears throat> Unfortunately, uh, doing that, they always don't want to let us sit in the handicapped seats. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. The other day we came over, and there's a theater. We just passed it, or we're about to pass it. It's right there. Yeah. Right by where you and I do lunch and where we tend to podcast often now. Um, and we went there, and if you wanted to see the movie in 2D, you uh, didn't have a lot of choices. And in the one showing that we would be able to do, because we both came right after work, uh, the only available seats were the handicap seats. Now, I don't remember what it was we saw. Maybe everything. But we tend to sit in those handicapped seats because they're available and nobody dares sit in them. But when we were trying to buy them, a little warning came up that said, if somebody in a wheelchair exists in the world right now, you may be asked to vacate that seat. And if, if there are no other available seats, get the f out. It, uh, it might have been hell. It said get the hell out. But Oh, okay. Wait, 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 do you remember it well? I don't. Anyway, so I, I was it you or me or both of us were afraid of that. I'm going to um, say it was you because I makes... crapped my pants there you when okay. the, that warning came up. So it, it, I guess it was me. I, well, the thing is, I don't want to be there and then be like, "Oh no, sorry, you need to get out of that." And then the rest of the theater's full because it's opening night. So what do we do? Sit on in the aisle, and then the usher comes along, and says, "Hey, you can't sit there. Get out of here." Sit What's on. that smell? <laughs> So I didn't want to uh, deal with that. So we wound up going to a different theater, which likes people who like 2D movies because they had like a billion showings. The 2D showings were like every, would you say 15 minutes or Something every half like hour? That. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. And we uh, picked a, a showing and we're like, okay, well, here we go. Cross your fingers. And there were three or four seats taken, <laughs> right? Yeah, it was pretty much a wide open. And yeah, so well, we still took the handicap seats. To make first, we picked a showing, and it was totally full. And we're oh, well, maybe the 15 minutes later, and it was wide. That one was completely open. It was just okay. like, oh, maybe okay. they opened that 15 minutes one later 
yeah, after, know. you know, they, it's like, oh, hey, that one sold out. Let's get another one going. You see, in the world of digital projection, you can do that. You can say, well, you know, we have Paul Blart Mall Cop scheduled in this theater, but F it, Avengers 2 came out. Yeah. And I like that. I like the, the, the whatever it is, the, you know, the freedom to just say, well, guys, we're going to squeeze in two more showings because, you know, that's a thousand bucks right there or whatever it is. And people you know. want them. Yeah, that's cool. So, expectations. Oh, right, right, right. We are now passing under the freeway, and as I look up, it may not be as uh, jam-packed as it was when we came down here. The time eating pizza that we spent uh, may have cleared it up, but oh well. We're going this way anyways. We're almost there. Well, that's okay. More time for us to, uh, to podcast. My cousin saw it last night. Now, he's one of those. He's still young enough, I guess. Or he had to see it opening night. Not, not, I guess we're seeing it opening night, but he had to see it at the midnight show. Right. And he texted me and said, you know, hey, we're going to go do this. You want to come? And I said, ah, I, I, I've got to be at work tomorrow morning. No. And he texted me back, lame. And I was like, <laughs> well, I, I guess, but Vic and I were going to watch it when we wanted to watch it on our timeline after work. You know what I mean? It's just like there's, there's no advantage to seeing it at 12.05 on Thursday night. And uh, to, so today I keep getting texts from him and I was always wary about opening them because I was like, oh, I'm going to spoil it for him to pay him back for not going to the movies with us. That was my guess is what he was going to do. But yeah, John Lovett's voice. <laughs> That's right. He didn't go see the movie and I'm reaping all the benefits. But my, one of my coworkers said, are you going to see Avengers? I hear Iron Man dies. And I thought, well, he's in the next Captain America movie, so no, that's that that's not true. But still, why would you say that to a person? Why? <laughs> yeah, the only close to spoilery thing that I've heard in the day yeah. is that uh, the movie is good. What? Somebody said that, and I said, zip it! And he said, no, I'm just, zip it! <laughs> and so... Uh, but then a minute later, he asked me if I'd seen the most recent Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm up to date, but I haven't seen Tuesdays yet, because we always watch them on Sunday, on my own time, <laughs> like I do with the Avengers movies. And he said, oh, well, it's better if you have seen it, because there's, you know, something. I don't know what. Uh, I tried to watch it, but I got about a minute into it. You know, I was trying to, like, sneak it in as I did other stuff. At work. And, yeah, it didn't happen. And yeah, I didn't either. I, I thought it would be cool if you saw that episode, and I didn't. And we could sort of compare experiences, although it's hard to do that with if unless you are willing to just say, okay, well, this is what the episode was about. This is what you missed. And right. I would be mad if you did that. But, you know, I know enough about movies and the Marvel Universe and all that that my guess is I'm going to be okay. Yeah, I think you'll be okay, and I guess when you do see that episode, like when I do see it, which is going to be tomorrow morning, because I'm going to force all the kids to watch it before I take them to... Uh, oh, so you'll be able to see the two experiences. Of course, it won't quite be the same, because I'll have already seen it once, so, you know, whatever. But the Martians won't have seen it. What was I going to say? Oh, okay, so so we were talking about expectations. I, I, I started to get worried a little bit worried that I wouldn't like the movie because I so liked the first Avengers and I'm such a fan of Joss Whedon and I like, I love the Marvel Cinematic Universe and when you get all of those things stacked up you start to build unrealistic expectations, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, you know, Joss will say something and now this is years ago when he was first writing Age of Ultron but he'd say things like, this one's going to be more of a personal story and, you know, this is going to be, you know, the dark middle chat. This is going to be the Empire Strikes Back of the... Uh, Avengers movies and, and and when he says stuff like that I start going oh a more personal story again I'm showing how old I am but a more personal story is something I want to flock to more explosions I can do without yeah however everything in all of the trailers looks like more explosions it looks like I mean there's there's the the one bit that they have at the end of the one trailer where Thor's like is that all you got and then, like, all these gajillion Ultron bots crawl up out of the uh, rubble. Still haven't seen that trailer, but okay. Oh, okay, good. Um, <clears throat> and then they say, oh, you had to say that, didn't you? Who says that? I can't remember. Either K 
Captain America or Iron Man or I don't remember what. But anyways, that kind of stuff, I don't know. When I see all those bots come crawling out, it's, to me it's like, oh, okay, so it's uh, a zombie movie but with robots instead or something. I don't know. There's just that... It looks like more explosions, basically what I'm trying to say, which I suppose you kind of have to do. You have to top your last movie whenever you're doing a sequel, it seems, or you have to do it with your last book, too. I mean, I've been reading these books in the Expanse universe, and I watched an interview with the authors, and that's what they were saying. They're like, yeah, the first thing that we talked about is that we have to up the stakes in this uh, next sequel here and I think that's kind of what people always expect to do it's either up the stakes or the other way you go is do the exact same movie but set uh, it on a boat or something like that see the thing is I don't like either of those things Me neither. I mean but when you say up the stakes you mean make it bigger right or do you mean make you can make it more personal you can make it mean more by upping the stakes or do you just mean bigger bigger budget more explosions I more bad guys. I think what they were saying when they said that was make it dangerous to more than just you know one person you know last time it was one person now two people will be in danger <laughs> you well, know but if you look at like the die hard movies in the first movie it's he's saving the people in a building and the second movie he's saving all these people in the airport and on a plane the third movie he's saving what new york city the fourth movie he's saving basically the continental united states the fifth movie he's preventing world war three between you know russia and america and all that so he's saving two countries and well, die hard six you know that's the one where he's saving the entire planet from the the martian invaders each one is significantly bigger almost like arbitrarily and I don't I don't know if anybody in the world can get away with saying okay this is going to be a smaller more personal movie it would have been Joss Whedon but I understand you know that billions of dollars lie in the uh, what do you call it are they're on the line right now in the offing you know hundreds of jobs and and yeah I mean just like incredibly rich people who need to become richer and so there's got to be a lot of pressure on Joss. Well, no, sorry. You can't put a tiara on her. And, yeah, we need um, a thousand Ultrons. There is not going to be a parking No, like from a mile back we saw people parked on the, si on the side of the road like at a concert or something. No. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. This is ugly. But, yeah, surely it is just Avengers. So, yeah, the, uh, we'll have to see how it works. Um, I'm going to make you put a quote from uh, Community at the start of this episode, where the cop says... Stoke for Avengers? 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 I hear Marvel got really hands-on this time. They really pinned in Joss Whedon creatively, so how could that go wrong? Okay, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's from the newest Community, or yeah. talking about the first Avengers? It's from the newest one, talking about this one, where they're just like, yeah, I heard they really reined him in creatively. So, you know, I can't see that going wrong, or something like that. I can't remember exactly the quote, but it made me chuckle. I hope it's not true, however. It may be. I mean, they gave him a lot of freedom, I felt, in the 2002, was 2012 movie, but we won't we can't ever Holy really crap. know. We're going to be like all the way at the far end of farmland. That's where I have more room to podcast in. Except You'd like to think that, wouldn't you? Okay. Ooh, somebody's oh, somebody's backing out. out. Except for, oh, I was going to say somebody's trying to pull And there's a douchebag that parked himself right in the middle of two spots. Oh, gosh. Why do people do that? My car's small. Oh, I think you just pull him back in. Damn it. Good thing is my car is small enough that I could fit next to that guy that parked in two spots. Or I could fit in this tiny spot here. Well, good for you, man. You fit in a tiny spot. Anyway, I am a little worried that it's not going to be great or that my expectations are unattainable. But, um, I, I, you know, I just want to have a good time and I want to be amused and moved. And Joss Whedon is good at all that stuff, right? Um, usually, yeah. He very seldom has let me down, so I'm looking forward to him to do the same. It's time to get out of the car. It is. So we're going to go ahead in there, and we'll be back in a minute to tell you what we thought. You're listening to That Gets My Goat on the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. 
Hi, everybody. We're back. I don't know that you needed the hi, everybody. But yes, we are back. It's a few you hours think they later. they already could tell we were back? Because of the singing thing? Was that what that was? Huh, yes. It's a few hours later, and uh, we have now exited the theater. And, uh, yeah, we're here to uh, give our impressions, I guess. Is that what we're doing, giving our impressions? Or are we just going to tell everybody how it ends and spoil it? I, I imagine we will spoil it. But you wouldn't be listening to us if you hadn't already seen it, right? I would hope not. Don't listen to this show until you've seen the movie. Because spoilers will abound. Spoiler number one. Mm -hmm. They hardly use the Avengers theme song. <laughs> that that you heard me doing right when we first started up is about as much as you hear in the movie. Until you get to the end credits where they do do it. I don't know what the deal is with that. What is the deal with that? I don't know. We would bemoaned it before. But the two times that you hear it in the movie, I had an emotional reaction to it. I was like, oh, hey, that's the Avengers theme for the first movie. Um, maybe if I see the movie again and again, I'll pick up on, like, oh, that is Ultron's theme, or oh, that's the Twins theme, or oh, you know, that's the Hulkbuster theme. I don't know. But right now, yeah, the only thing I was picked up on was, oh, hey, Avengers theme. And then, you know, two hours pass, and then you hear it again. Yeah, that's just kind of a bummer, because it's a really good theme. And you were saying, as the credits played, you know, if we only heard that like nine more times, <laughs> that would have been really cool. And yeah, it would. I still don't understand why they've given up on that. You think they're not going to play the freaking Star Wars theme a bunch of times when Star Wars comes? They're going to, and they're going to be right about it. You would think, well, I guess you wouldn't think, because how many movies has Joss Whedon done? He's done lots of TV shows. This is only his fourth a, movie. Only a few movies, and so he doesn't have that much experience. But somebody's got to realize that it's awesome to play the awesome theme song more often. The people that make movies today were all raised on Indiana Jones and Star, Star Wars, Wars and, Star and all those shows that play the theme, you know, that John Williams made themes famous, Superman, etc., where you keep hearing it, and it means something when you hear it because you keep hearing it. Yeah, I remember in that first moment, first Avengers, when they're on the helicarrier and Cap is trying to stop the bad guys from dropping the helicarrier. For a split second, you hear the Captain America theme, and I remember going, "Ah!" Oh, and you did too. You're like, "Hey, yeah, <laughs> that, that was the Captain America theme," and it's weird that. They would have relegated the Avengers theme to that in an Avengers movie, but... Yeah, they had Brian Tyler and Danny Elfman scoring it. What was that all about, too? When was the last time you've seen two people score one movie? Um, and Zimmer and, and James Newton Howard would do the Christopher Nolan movies. Oh, right. But, uh, yeah, that the, the Avengers theme is is one of two complaints I have about the movie. And the other complaint is that the Korean Doctor lived. So they're minor things, I guess, really. But, but she, uh, sorry, not that she lived, but that she died and then she showed up again at the end. And, and you said she dead. never died, but I saw Ultron blast her and there was this giant burned gash across her body. And certainly all the other scientists that he blasted did not get back up. But that's okay. That's that's just me. She has a big part to play in the future. Okay. I, I, I hope so. She's lovely. She's the one that brings down the Infinity Gauntlet, so... Oh, sorry, spoiler alert. Wait, no, we already <coughs> gave that alert. We did. <laughs> yeah, the the show was really good. I definitely give it a thumbs up. What did I have for complaints? I was talking with you before the show started about a trailer which you apparently never saw, where... Thor yells, is that all you've got? And then a gazillion little robot guys come out of the rubble and all start, run, they're doing their fast zombie run towards the Avengers. 
then Captain America says, oh, you had you to had say to that. And I, I was like, okay, this looks like World War Z, this little scene here. It's still, I don't know, the, the gazillion robot thing, I guess. I mean, I don't know what else Ultron is going to do. I don't, I don't really know Ultron. Even after that movie, I still don't feel like I know Ultron's abilities, or Ultron's powers. I know that Ultron is a super... He's like one of the hardest bad guys for the Avengers to defeat. He's like a Doctor Doom level kind of bad guy. Where he's considered a match for all of them. Seems like Doctor Doom kind of does the same thing. He has Doom bots or whatever that will often do his dirty work for him. So having tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of robots. I guess if you're going to fight super powered guys having a whole army is handy. I don't know. The other thing that made me cringe a little bit, and I don't know if it made you cringe a little bit too, was, you know, we complained after Superman, a uh, Man of Steel movie, about how much civilian casualties happened in the movie while the superheroes were just like, yeah, I don't really give a shit. I'm just, you know, flying around breaking buildings because that's what I can do, and I'm rad. And in this movie, there was also a great deal of civilian casualties. In the last one, I mean, there was the big battle of New York at the end, but the rest of it seemed to be relatively low on civilian casualties, and this one didn't seem quite as much that way. And they were doing their best to save all these people, and I suppose a villain needs to put those people in danger because they're the ones that can die, not the superheroes. They're superheroes, and so you can do all sorts of stuff to them and they're not going to die so you gotta menace the other little people that they're supposed to save the cool thing about it was you know when hulk goes crazy and he runs into the town and starts tearing it up and iron man goes after him with his hulk buster you can tell the whole time he's trying to get hulk out of there he's trying to minimize the damage which is something that in Man of Steel they didn't give a crap about. Well, how long was Avengers 2? How long of Would a Would you say three was? hours? Possibly. I really don't know, but it was close to it. Not, it was about 11 when we got out. The show started at 8.10, and I'd say we had maybe 15 minutes of trailer, so maybe like two and a half. Okay, well, okay. Tops. let's say it was two and a half hours long. And this is not to disagree with you in any way, except for I'd say of the two and a half hours we saw, 110 minutes was them protecting people so there were no civilian casualties uh -huh. from beginning to end over and over and over i think we saw about three civilian casualties in the whole mm -hmm. two and a half hours and the rest of the time they were trying to save people which feels to me like it was hey we saw man of steel too guys <laughs> not only are we going to be better than that we're going to address it in every frame of this movie so that nobody will be able to feel what I felt when I saw Man of Steel. And I could totally be wrong about that. But it was just like, whoa, again. And again, and, you know, when like Tony scans the building and there's no one in it. And he's like, oh, good. All right. I was just like, that's again doing the same thing. It's just like, okay, folks, you can enjoy this violence because <laughs> nobody's going to get killed. I don't know. I, I appreciated that. That spoke to me. Just <laughs> there, at one point, Ultron refers to the lesser Avengers as the, the, what did he call them? The, the less useful ones, the more, the weaker ones or something like that. And yeah, their job was pretty much save people. While we try and stop Ultron, you save people. And I th thought that that was really, really cool. Somewhere out there is a three and a half hour Avengers one that puts back all of that cap saving people stuff that you can see on YouTube. Where it's just, wow, more cap-saving people and more cap-saving people. And I don't know if Josh just gave the second unit carte blanche and said, go out and think of all the ways that Cap can save people. They didn't put it in the movie, but it, uh, <laughs> it was all shot. And uh, I don't know. I really respond to that. I like the thought that, you know, that these guys are here to help us and to protect us. And, you know, while Hulk is smashing, somebody is there to make sure we don't get smashed. No, I, I understand what you're saying with the uh, the fact that they're saving people. It's just that there was a lot of fighting going on always in 
populated areas, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And a lot of buildings. I mean, stuff that you don't see, which when it comes down to it in, in the Man of Steel movie, you didn't see people... In this one, you actually saw people in danger more than Man of Steel. Man of Steel, they're just taking down buildings. And as far as it mattered to them, they were trees. You know, they spent no more time bothering with it than that. Whereas in this case, yeah, you would see people, I don't know, fall off the bridge or whatever. And they would have to save them. But yeah, every time it was this town, that town, town in Korea, town in Africa, town in wherever that place was it wasn't a real place was it the place i think where... it was some eastern european place yeah every time i'd see like street signs or signs i'd wonder was well, that a is that a real language is that yeah it was eastern european but i think they came up with a fake name for the country that it was at and they said it a few times but i can't remember the name of it where the special base was so baron von strucker didn't last very long huh no not at all i really expected him to have Something to do. I, yeah, that's really strange. Because, yeah, it was my understanding that since, um, what's his name, wouldn't come back as Red Skull, he was going to be like the new face of uh, Hydra. But, whoops, I read that wrong. Huh, maybe he's not really dead. Maybe that was uh, some kind of BS. So they introduced a lot of new people, and they brought back a lot of people that were... Never in Avengers movies, but we're in other movies. Especially at that big party that they were having mm. after they got the scepter. We saw, it seemed, everybody. Except Pe Pepper. for Pepper and Jane. And they addressed it at least. You know, they sat there talking about how, oh yeah, Pepper's awesome. And, oh no, Jane is awesome. But they were the two people that we didn't see. We got to see Rhodey. We got to see uh, Falcon, whatever his... It was so cool to see Falcon! Whatever his non-hero name is. Do you know what his non-hero name is? I normally do. It's I'm blanking on it right uh -huh. now. We got to see War Machine. Sam Wilson. Oh, yeah? Nice. Okay, we got to see Rhodey and Sam Wilson. Then we Maria had... Hill. Oh, yes, we had Maria Hill. We had uh, Nick Fury make a reappearance. We got to see Dr. Selvig. Yeah, Dr. Selvig. I was thinking for a minute that he was actually going to go to Jane Foster there when, when he did, but something else, apparently. Yeah, it would have made sense, but I guess uh, Skarsgård was more willing to come back. I... Which is, uh, I don't know why, but that seems weird. Which part? Just that Selvig that, would be in it or that Jane no, Foster would No, that wouldn't. Jane Foster wouldn't want to be in the sequel to the biggest movie ever. Or second, I don't know where it lies in the biggest cysts. Since the, every movie is the biggest movie ever these days. Agreed. But yeah, it was neat to see all those people back. And then we had some new Avengers come in. Who was your favorite of the new Avengers? I, it's hard to, for me to admit it, but I, it was Scarlet Witch. I thought that she was really, really interesting. And her powers were interesting. I mean, I still don't get how they work in the movie. <laughs> but I liked the. I think twice her eyes went red. And I loved how she would F with people's minds and then we'd see a vision that they had. I don't know. I just thought it was really, really neat. that you know, Because she's an Olsen sister and I was like, ugh. I, I saw Godzilla and I thought she was awful in that. And But I, I, I oh gosh, whoever's idea it was, and I'm going to say it was Joss Whedon's, but whoever's idea it was to have him have the Eastern European accent, I want to shake that person's hand. It made all the difference to me. That these were not just, you know, American teenagers or whatever it was. They felt exotic because of the accent to me. And, and, and yeah, I really liked their tightness, their relationship. They didn't quite go Ultimate Universe and have them be lovers, which I appreciate. But, you know, <laughs> if that floats your boat, that's cool too, I guess. I, I, the movie disappointed you in that way. But, no, I, I really dug that. I liked, I liked her. I really liked the way Vision looked. Yeah, I would, he was I would neat looking. look at him and be like... Is that Paul Bettany in a suit, or is that is there something else going on here? And, and I, I don't know. And then, yeah, Quicksilver ran really fast. Yeah, I remember when Days of Future Past came out, and you said that Joss Whedon really has his uh, work cut out for him to make Quicksilver live up to the Quicksilver that was in that movie. And he never really had something as awesome as the Quicksilver scene that we saw in uh, 
Days of Future Past, where he's running around, you know, doing all the different things to all the guards in the room. Wow, if, if I could put Time in a Bottle plays on his headphones, or I guess it's not on his headphones because he would go so fast that it would only get through one note. But yeah, he I thought he was still interesting, but yeah, he was th uh, probably the least interesting of the three new ones. Vision was very neat looking. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the, the problem is I don't understand, and they don't ever come out and tell you again like I mean Quicksilver at least we understand his power except for that he somehow was able to punch these metal guys and make them explode when he would run fast which I would assume would probably break his hand rather than break the metal guys but maybe because he was going so fast maybe he vibrates his hand like Flash does in the Flash uh, TV show or I guess it's reverse flash that does the hand vibrating thing. But flash vibrates himself so he can't be looked at. Makes himself blurry. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Quicksilver, we understand what his power is. But Scarlet Witch, we don't understand what her power is. I don't, I still, I mean. They, do they ever, well, I guess they do. They, they, they say... They say uh, telekinesis, and they say they say a technical explanation of it, and Cap then Cap doesn't get it, and she says she's weird. Yeah, he's fast, and she's weird is what we get. And weird doesn't really help. It's funny, but it doesn't help you uh, understand what the heck she can do. Apparently, she can do a dang lot. Yes, and like you've you've told me this before, because you're more of a comic book uh, scholar than me by quite a long ways. I've read early X-Men comics where Scarlet Witch first appears with the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants and her power is this hex power which basically makes bad things happen. And so she would like do a hex power and a guy's briefcase would open and stuff would spill out and it would make one of the X-Men trip. That was basically what her power was and, and apparently that has evolved quite a lot until she's become one of like the most powerful mutants or ma powerful people well it's that's something it's marvel's overcompensation they've done that time and time again they did that with invisible woman who was the most worthless member of the fantastic four so they made her the most powerful they did it with marvel girl who was the least powerful x-man and then they made her a god and they did it you know with with scarlet witch as well you know where she has become a god as well and uh yeah, I mean, now she can just alter anything. She Her magic is like, you know, Doctor Strange level of what she can do. And in this, I guess there did seem to be a little bit of magic, right? I, 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 I don't know. I mean, the, it was some kind of plasma she was yeah, putting like out? Yeah, or plasma flamey or just, stuff. It was visually really dynamic, but I, I don't know what it really was. She she do like energy bursts, and that's what it Because she was able to tear things apart. Yeah, she was blasting and, things with blasts of power. And yeah, she she's able to crush Ultron with her mind, you know, with her hand and stuff like that. And I don't really know either what Vision is able to do. I know he can fly, and he can get into a robot's brain or something. Well, we saw him shoot these beams out of his. Oh orbit. yeah, he shot at lasers. the very end. Yeah, and which was again visually really cool. Shot lasers with the mind stone, and I don't I'm, know. I'm assuming he was super strong too. Yeah, he did stuff where like I don't know. He had he he has powers. We'll just go there. It's not well defined. Although when it comes down to it, I guess some of the others aren't all that well defined it seems to me sometimes that scarlett johansson that black widow has some kind of power she's beyond just being super spy she's been enhanced you know you get at one point all the avengers get their brains zapped and they see like scary stuff and uh black widow goes back to when she was a child and she's being trained as a super spy she, she's going to this horrible operation, which they say is just that she was sterilized, so she can't have a child. I guess that's bad, but it seems like something that horrible would have to be a little bit more horrible, you know what I mean? 
involve a lot of torturous pain and, I don't know, some kind of bionics or something being inserted in there. Not in the reproductive tract, but in her body. <laughs> Anyways, she goes through a lot. Like, there's times where she's doing some pretty crazy stuff. And there's times when the Hulk has grabbed her and jumped and they're flying through the air and then they crash down onto the ground and she just kind of rolls and then gets up which is beyond what a normal person should be able to do like the time in the first movie where she's like nah I gotta ride throw me up there and I'll just catch this feeding <laughs> thing as it flies by and hold on because I can do that I'm a normal person and normal people do that you know what I mean it's just she seems like she's enhanced in some way. I don't know if we'll ever hear about that. There was an episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. No, it was Agent Carter, where they had this Russian super spy chick that was raised in this... And she knew Crotch Fu, just like Natasha does. Yeah, this crazy <laughs> uh, Russian super spy making place, which it seems is probably something like where Black Widow came from. Uh, it seems like maybe she's got some superpowers, but also Captain America. You never really know. I guess he's just super strong and like super agile and super good fighter. He can always catch his shield wherever he throws it. <laughs> I don't know what his superpowers really are either. Thor, his superpowers seem a little undefined. He can hit things with a hammer. He can take, a, can take a beating and keep on tweeting. <laughs> no. <laughs> Seems, I guess that's just the way it is with a movie, though. I mean, it can't be like a comic book or a book where they lay it out for you eventually. One way or another, they're going to explain this crap. Um, that's one of those things about writing that I've read in a lot of those how-to-write science fiction and fantasy books. is If you're going to make magic... You need to set down your rules of magic and then don't break them. Don't just suddenly pull some, oh look, there's God in this machine that can save us out of the hat at the end in some way that breaks the rules. You gotta set the rules out or else your book's gonna suck. And superpowers seem to be magic as well. Well, if after Wanda had killed Ultron Prime, she had gone to Pietro's body and using her powers had brought him back to life. Would that have upset you? Would you have been like, oh, hey, hey, I mean, or was that it doable within what we saw her do during the movie? I could see it happening. It wouldn't upset me because we have no rules for her. We don't know what she can do. But it wouldn't have worked because... That's a big deal, you know what I'm saying? Raising someone from the dead is is a huge deal. So if that is going to happen, it needs to be something where people, oh, I don't think that could happen. You know what I mean? Oh, she has a lot of power, but there's limits. Kind of just one of those things where you like at least cast a doubt on it so that when it happens, it's like, oh, it's a miracle. Wow. Instead of just, uh, yeah, I'm also going to do this. I'm going to save the Korean doctor. <laughs> I don't know. I guess that's just kind of one of the things that's going to have to happen in a movie because you can't have the paragraph that just describes and tells you this is the rule, this is the rule, this is the rule. Okay, let's go. And you don't want to have the really boring scene where the one person sits there and is like, okay, this is the rule and this is the rule. Wait, what was the rule? Oh, you know, one of those kind of scenes would be counterproductive but yeah i don't know it was really interesting good show go ahead well when, before we saw the movie we were talking about you know they got to raise the stakes and i had hoped that this would be a more personal movie but as i was watching it i started to feel like it was like we were getting personal stuff i mean like insights into their characters and stuff with you know the visions that they had and their fears even though, yeah, okay, it's bigger and there was... Sorry for my French, guys. A fuck ton of CG. 
there was a lot still, of zombie robots. There was still a lot of interpersonal stuff with them. You you had a couple of quiet moments of introspection and conversation, really good Joss Whedon dialogue. Then yeah, a little like six minute visit to the Barton Farm, uh-huh. which was it was nice. It was it just you know it was one of those okay now we're gonna have an interlude. And I liked that Barton had a life and that none of the others did. And they're like, whoa, oh, that's weird. Although there's no reason why Thor doesn't. And Tony and everything else we've ever seen with Tony in it, he has. Pepper. But it was just interesting to see them all. And Natasha knew about it. Yeah. Which I guess makes sense because they're supposedly real good friends. Yeah, but I just thought that that was cool. They set it up at the very beginning. It's like, I don't have a girlfriend. And then, you know, we find out that he's got this thing, this safe house. Yeah. One of the real pluses for me in this movie was Joss Whedon. Um, You can tell that Joss Whedon is all over that movie. It's it's interesting because I watch The Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. every week. And you can't tell as much that Joss Whedon is involved in that. I assume he has some involvement in it. I don't know anymore. But, uh... It's not like, I don't know, watching an episode of Firefly or something where everything that people say is worth listening to and you have to rewind it if you missed something. Where somebody says something, wait, 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 what did they say? Oh, hold on, hold on. You rewind (laughs) it back and listen to it again because you know it's going to be good. Yeah, there was so much good stuff in this film because Joss Whedon was uh, was behind it. yeah, I remember uh, somebody talking about after the first Avengers came out, they're just like, oh, after watching Avengers, you know, watching any other movies can be like reading tax code or something. <laughs> it's just it's so boring and dull compared to the stuff that these other that the Avengers said. And yeah, they, they had the same thing, like the, the running thing with Captain America complained about, was it Iron Man who said it? Yes, yeah, Tony at the very beginning when he sees there's a shield on that castle. He uses the S word, which we won't use on our show. And, uh, <laughs> and Caps' his language. And then they, that becomes like this joke. Oh, that was great, man. From there Ever, on they brought out. it up again and again. Everybody knew about it. It was good. And there was other similar things, you know, like after we go to the Barton farm and we learn about that, then later. There's a point where they're up in this... The city is now a floating rock in the sky. And Hawkeye and Black Widow are driving this car through the town trying to get to the helicarrier so they can get off. And while they're doing this, Hawkeye's like, Oh yeah, so I'm thinking what I really need to do is redo the kitchen, or do a dining room. And he's talking about how he's going to fix up his farmhouse in the middle of all this crap. Which is just, you know, it's one of those ridiculous things that's just funny. It's 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 great to see little moments like that thrown in. Well, the one thing that I was most impressed by in the first Avengers is, and you may recall this, it was that everybody had something to do. Everybody had an important part to play, and they gave everybody at least one scene where they got to shine. And... Uh, they totally did it again in this one. You know, everybody had their little thing, including the new characters. Yeah. I have no idea how hard that would be, except for that I saw it movie after movie after movie not happen when they were doing Star Trek movies. <laughs> and so it's just really uh, impressive again on Joss's part. And, uh, you know, there were a couple of um, badly staged fights with CG and stuff early, early on in the movie. But when we got the Hulkbuster fight, or I guess it wasn't even called the Hulkbuster. Was it Veronica? Is that what they called it? Yeah. The Veronica was, I think, just the name of the AI that was in the satellite thing that brought the Hulkbuster armor. Okay. Whatever that Which, means. But apparently he had a lot of these because Jarvis... Normally, Jarvis is what controls everything. Jarvis gets put into the Vision... And from then, he's like, oh, well, now I don't have Jarvis. And he just pulls out a chip that has the name Friday on it. And he puts that in, and it's this Irish woman who is now his new AI that tells him that he can't make the city stop flying. 
Plus, there's apparently Veronica. And her name was Veronica. Uh, yeah, I thought of Elvis Costello the whole time, and I don't know why. But I, no, I thought that Veronica was was one of his projects. You know, that was there to protect the Earth. And Veronica's just floating around the, the planet, trying to protect things. Anyway, the point I was trying to make is, I loved every moment of that Hulk versus Hulkbuster fight. I just loved it. And I loved that he kept talking to him and trying to tell him, you know, hey, this isn't you, buddy. You, come on, come on, calm down or whatever. That he was trying to reason with him that this was his friend that he was fighting. Oh my gosh, I loved that. And like all the fun stuff that Tony would do to, to try and stop the Hulk and the, the pile driver yeah. thing in the face. Yep. And he's saying, night, night, now go to sleep, go to sleep. Oh my gosh. I Oh, I loved it. And they takes down a whole building. But again, he makes sure that there's nobody in that building before they take it down. Cool, cool stuff, man. Yeah, the Veronica, at at one point before that, Banner and Stark are talking. And Banner says that Veronica is out there as like his failsafe or something like that. So it's mentioned before it actually comes. It's not just there to protect the Earth, but it's there to, to stop the Hulk. Mm. Just in case. Anyways... This was a, I, I don't know, I would say it was a worthy sequel. I enjoyed it. Well, uh, can we talk for a moment about Ultron? Okay. Gosh, he he had so much personality that I feel like th- that was too much personality. <laughs> I, I can't pin down who Ultron was or what his deal was. I mean, because there's that moment James early, Spader. early, well, <laughs> yes, James Spader, obviously James Spader. But early, early on, he throws that little fit when somebody says you're like Stark. And I expected that to come back again and again, but it didn't. He evolved. He changed. He stopped being that guy. And he, the Pinocchio thing it was one little aspect. And, 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 you know, I remember he kept being upgraded and being replaced by a better version. And one time uh, he's talking to Natasha and he is replaced by a better Ultron while he's talking to Natasha, who murders the old Ultron, which... Just to make a point. I guess. But anyway, you know, I thought that he was really interesting I was kind of baffled by him, but I, I'm really happy to see him go until he's the pathetic final vestige of Ultron and he has a conversation with Vision. And then I was a little saddened to see him go. It was weird. I mean, of course they do the friggin' horror movies not really dead. <laughs> at the last second, so it's okay to kill him, which bothered me. Okay, th- no, third thing I didn't like about the movie. But it was a, it's a tiny thing. I mean, it lasted less than a second. And it was just an excuse so that we wouldn't feel guilty about Vision killing him. And and you can disagree with that, too, if you want. That's fine. I, did you feel sorry for him when he was the broken one at the end? I suppose not really, because he was a broken one a lot of times through the film. He started out as a broken one. I get the feeling that that could bring him back at any time. He's not really gone. We talk about movies that they stupidly kill off their great villain so that it can never come back in sequel after sequel a la the early Batman movies and uh, I guess you could say they did that with this but there were so many gajillion Ultrons and you know every one of them was Ultron basically there was never one that wasn't so we saw the one at the end that managed to put his hand on the key even though he'd been ripped in half he was able to drag himself up there and get it on there and we did hear at the start that he fled through the internet or something off to somewhere else it seems to me like ultron is not something that could just be killed he could be thwarted but uh, i don't know i get the feeling that there's probably ultron still out there and he'll gather his strength and try something else at some other time but probably not when it comes down to it because they got other plans for, for the Avengers. They got a uh, Infinity Gauntlet war to come. See, yeah, I wish I had your faith. But I think that they definitively destroyed Ultron at the end of that movie. And I was hoping when all the credits were done, we would get a tag where we see that Vision had kept one. That Vision had sub-routine, sub-sub-sub-programming of... I must continue the Ultron ways. That's what I wanted to see because Vision was uh, originally an Ultron. Like in the movie, 
Although, I mean, in the comics, Hank Pym created Ultron, and Ultron created the Vision. So at least we got that part correct. And I just thought, well, part of Ultron's programming is to always make more Ultrons, you know. Before you're destroyed, create one more. Because 25 issues from now, we want Ultron to come back. Right. Which is a brilliance of comic books. It's something that I, I really appreciate about comics. There's never going to be a final issue. And I just thought, wouldn't it be neat if Vision, I mean, even though he's a saint and all this stuff, has, <laughs> here's here's one more, just in case, you know. Yeah, it would be interesting. I, I was actually kind of expecting that, too. Maybe your post-credits thing, which... Oddly, didn't happen. I was kind of surprised that it didn't. But yeah, it'd be one of those things where one last Ultron crushed body or something is sitting there, and then it goes and its head opens up and crawls away, or it opens its eyes and it goes. Shh. <laughs> what was that? That was Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, they so easily could have done that because if we think, how many Ultrons would you say had been in that movie? Would you say? At least a thousand. Okay. Well, holy cow. See, I was going to say 200. So if there were a thousand Ultrons, there had to have been in the double digits of Ultrons that we see knocked down or crushed by something or whatever that could have survived. Right. You know what I mean? Just a, something that Hulk stamped on or threw a car on or, you know, fell and he's under a rocks. And then at the very last shot, it crawls out and it goes, <sighs> you know, not <laughs> or sh it's just, you know, it's like, I've got my work cut out for me. And that's the end. But, yeah, I don't think we'll ever see Ultron again. Yeah, I don't and think we will either. But I also don't think that he's definitively gone, like you say. I think that they could bring him back if they wanted to. But I don't think they're going to. That's the thing about Marvel is they have plenty of villains out there. And they've got plans They've got villains like, you know, before the first Avengers came out, I'd never heard of Thanos. Apparently he's a big baddie that's going to be, you know, really be the man. I didn't know anything about him. And there's tons of others. You know, eventually they may be able to bring all their characters back into the one fold. And you'll be able to really start bringing the, you know, having them go from one place to the other, going across platforms and stuff, which would be really neat, and we'll actually get to see Doctor Doom be something other than Electro. Well, but Doom is, is held by Fox, right. so That's why I'm it's going to be a while. It'll be a while, yeah, but eventually, I think, I would say 10 years from now, you'll see that they've brought everything back together. It seems like it's kind of a mission of theirs. And they've managed with Spider-Man, which is cool. I'm excited to see how that pans out in the future and I think we'll get the rest of them as well they'll work out some kind of a deal with Fox people will be fired and other people will take their place and they'll be like oh yeah money we like I'll that. take money actually here here's a briefcase fill it <laughs> <laughs> let's see is there anything we haven't talked about anything you want to talk about there was I, seems like one other moment I wanted to talk about in the movie but yeah, just uh, Joss's dialogue is so quirky and clever, and there's tiny little throwaway jokes, and then big jokes, and then then reminders of old jokes that make the the, the old jokes become big jokes, and, and he makes it seem easy. And I'm, I'm, I have no doubt that that was an incredibly difficult movie to make. But it flowed; it never seemed long. I, I just yeah, I, I really enjoyed. Like, all the different places they went, too. Like we haven't talked about going to Wakanda, or I guess we didn't go to Wakanda. We went to, tell me again, West? I don't know. It was African coast, they the said. African coast. But, you know, you see claw for a minute, and uh, they talk about vibranium. Okay, so one, one other thing I was thinking. We talked about it in the pre-watching the movie recording part. <laughs> the first half of the first quarter of the show. Apparently there's some kind of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. tie-in from the episode that happened on Tuesday. I have no idea what it was, because I haven't seen it yet. But my guess was that it has something to do with the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier that shows up at the end, out of the blue, suddenly, hey, we're here to help you out. Look at it's us. We pulled this helicarrier out of mothballs. My guess is that somehow Coulson and his S.H.I.E.L.D. folks helped them to get that to happen. 
I could be totally wrong, and I'm sure in a, you know tomorrow when I watch the the show itself, maybe it's not that obvious. I have to admit though, I was sad when they did sh get that. You know, they show it coming up, and it's like oh, I'm just here getting this thing together with a bunch of my friends, and you see uh, Maria Hill, and then you see a couple of random people come and sit down. Like one guy just looks. I don't know who he was. I don't know who he was either. Kind of nerdy dude. And he says, oh yeah, that's... He makes the joke where he's trying to say that... I can't remember exactly how it went, but he's trying to be cool. And he fails really badly. Like saying, I want to say it's like popped and locked or something like <laughs> that. I can't remember what it was that he said. But yeah, I was sad that we didn't just get a... I mean, one of those people could have been somebody from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. They could have had somebody make a small appearance. I mean, hell, we had everybody there. We had Haley Atwell back. We had Falcon, and we had Rhodey. And Heimdall we had was in there. Heimdall. We had just everybody. I wished that they'd done... I mean, I obviously there's something. I don't know what it is. But, yeah, I wish that actually somebody had actually appeared in the show maybe they did and i just totally missed it somehow how would we have missed it now if it had been abed <laughs> would you have been excited about that because he's been established as being part of the marvel universe that's right? true yeah he works for shield so that would have been cool <laughs> but yeah instead it was a guy that i'd never seen and he was wearing a, a, a white like a shirt, and, shirt tie. and tie yeah so he just stood out. I don't know. Well, yeah, I, you, you're going to watch uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. tomorrow. There's still a couple more episodes in the season that should all be related in some way, right? I would think. I don't know exactly how they can relate. But but you said, that was an interesting thing. You said that Strucker's right-hand man or whatever was from Agents Oh, yeah, I did see that guy. The guy that he was talking to when they were in there. And he says, nobody retreat, nobody surrender, or whatever. And then he turns and says, I'm going to surrender. That guy has been in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He's named... Shoot, I can't think of his name. I want to say like Vice or something like that. He's just kind of one of the, hey, maybe this guy will be head of Hydra now. But yeah, I just wish there'd been more. I guess that there was that one guy. What one guy? That one guy. Why? Vice or whatever that we did see. But he wasn't one of the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Those were the ones that I wanted to see. If we just saw, I don't know, Agent May come running in and sit down at one of those desks. That would that have been, been cool, awesome. Yeah. Just a little tiny thing for, hey, if you enjoy the show. But who was the guy? Why? Did, who was that guy? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll see. Maybe that he's in that episode. That was placeholder guy that I just feel like, oh, okay. It should have well, been Abed. It was supposed that, to be Abed, was, but Abed was too busy to do his cameo. So they had to get a different nerd. Did you want to complain about Falcon not getting to fight Eltrons too? Well, I, I thought it was kind of weird that he didn't. We got to see War Machine fight Ultrons, which I thought was cool. Yeah. It's neat to see. I like this roadie a lot. And it's fun to see him interact with Tony and all that stuff. And, and you know, he's they're both basically Iron Mans. Yeah, his story with the... Uh, yes! In the party was pretty funny where he tells <laughs> Drops it Drops the tank! Where he tells it to Thor and Captain America. Was that who he was talking to, those two? And they're just, like, completely unimpressed. And then he tells it to all these, like... Oh, normal people. Yeah, normal people. Like, oh, wow, great story. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we got to see Falcon, and he does talk about how he's like, oh, yes, yeah, too bad I wasn't there to help. And he's like, oh, yeah, I probably should have had you come. He's like, no, really, I didn't really want to be there. That sounded scary. Or whatever. <laughs> I don't know exactly what he was saying. But maybe that's why he wasn't there in the end to fight with the Ultrons like War Machine was. Or maybe they just figure, hey, Falcon's too delicate for something like that. He's not covered in armor like Iron Man. He's just a dude with some wings. He's not even, I mean, like we were talking about Black Widow before, she's not supposed to be super powered. Somehow she takes all sorts of punishment like she has Luke Cage skin or something. But Falcon's the same way. He's just a dude with a jetpack that looks like wings. It seems like they need to do something, protect him at least a little bit more, or else he'd be like the first casualty. Right, but he's still got to be more formidable 
against Ultron than Hawkeye. <laughs> and, and, you know, I really felt Hawkeye's humanity in this. Yeah. I think they played up, you know, because he gets hurt at the very beginning. But they keep showing that he's a human being and, uh, you know, vulnerable. And, and they <laughs> refer to him as old man, I think. And, I love the one part where he's trying to get Scarlet Witch to get with it. Get yeah. your shit together and help. And he's like, yes, we're flying. We're in a city and we're flying and we're fighting robots. And I have a bow and arrow. <laughs> To talk it, about how ridiculous it that makes is. no sense, and I loved that that he did that. I loved that he just like, yeah, okay, this is silly, but we gotta get with it. So let's go, go Avengers assemble. That was cool. Yeah, I thought that was a fun show. That was pretty good. Do you feel like it was worth it? It was. It fulfilled the three year hunger. That you had as you waited for the sequel to come around. You know, the three years flew by. Yeah, and we've seen did. so many movies. And we talked about it. Captain America 2 felt like a mini Avengers movie. It had so many people in it and, you know, teamwork and all that stuff. And uh, we, we were able to watch a Marvel series every week. And that's not counting Agent Carter or Daredevil, you know. It just... There's been plenty to tide us over it. It hasn't felt like a long time to me. So you haven't had a hunger? No, hell no. You haven't been just in the, waiting for that next in, Avengers? In fact, when Avengers 2 started, and within the first minute, you see all the Avengers on screen at once. In you one said, shot. Oh, they shot their load that early? Yeah, they shot their whole wad. And they, they wad it, the we talked we about... Yeah, sorry, folks. We I, I was vulgar there when I... We talked about uh, the first Avengers movie way back when that came out and how they had that one shot the that went hero on shot that and on was... and on as it went through. You know, here's this guy. Look, he's fighting. He's killing aliens. Okay, now here's this guy. Look, he's fighting, killing aliens. And they would just went from one to the next and the camera flew along. And this was supposedly the most expensive shot in the whole film. And I think there was even a point where, uh, you know, the, the film company was like, Hey, Joss, you think you can just dump this shot because it's really damn expensive? And we could save a whole lot of money by not using it. And he's like, no, we got to have the one shot where we see them all in the same shot because it shows that they're a team now and all this kind of stuff. And it was this big deal. And now here we are. First shot of the film, basically, is that shot. It went from one to the next to the next. We saw each one as they fought Hydra Nazis. I was kind of surprised by that. And then they did it again at the end as well as they fought robots. It's kind of interesting. You know, we talk about how Han shot first, right? He did shoot first. But then in the 21st century, Han doesn't shoot first anymore because, oh, kids can't handle that. Because that makes Han a bad guy. And the policemen can't have guns anymore when they chase the kids in E.T. They just have flashlights. Walkie-talkie. Um, Walkie-talkies, because we can't handle that anymore. And We can't kill now, stormtroopers anymore. We have to kill yeah, battle droids. Now we kill battle droids. And I guess when it comes down to it, Avengers is kind of guilty of that. Because Avengers 1, they killed a bunch of non-human aliens. Avengers 2, they killed a bunch of fast-walking zombie robots. Fast fucking and I don't movie. know. At well, the very beginning of the movie, though, they kill a load <laughs> of Hydra guys. That's In true. fact, there's that brilliant moment when Banner has come out of his Hulk state and he's worried about what kind of destruction he's wrought. And Thor says, "You sent so many souls to hell, <laughs> or whatever." And he's like, "Oh, the gates yeah. of hell are filled with the yeah. men you vanquished." <laughs> and then, of course, he has to backpedal and say, "No, they're complaining because of they're just torn ligaments and all that," <laughs> which was funny. But just like, of course, we killed them. That's what we do. Of course, and the Hulk is the best at killing them. Yeah. Uh, he has my respect. Drink with me. I thought that that was really neat. And, I, you know, Banner's neuroses and his, you know, his his fears of hurting people and stuff are just really cool. And it play, got played up way more in this movie than we'd seen it in his in the last one. And to the point where at the end, he's gone. He goes off by himself because he can't trust himself around anybody. Right. Is that 
Yeah. Was that what I you got out of that? I think he's going to fly off into space and there's going to be Planet Hulk. I don't. <laughs> but I would love to you see a Planet Hulk they haven't announced Hulk that movie. yet? I did um, hear Planet one... Hulk ruled. I did hear at one point that they... Cons- I haven't. Can I give you the hardcover of that so you can read it? Sure. I did hear at one point that uh, they'd considered trying to do the Planet Hulk as a Guardians of the Galaxy film. What? Somehow work it in with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Because apparently, and I don't know exactly what the deal is with this, but this guy that I work with was telling me he'd read a big long blog post of some entertainment blog where they talked about just the, the rights war with Universal and the Hulk. Apparently Universal, you know, got the rights all the way back when the TV show was made and they still have them from that. Apparently that may be why we still haven't seen a sequel solo Hulk movie and why he's only in other people's films. And uh, that was partly why they considered doing Planet Hulk as Guardians of the Galaxy. But I haven't read that myself, so it's, it's, it's apocryphal. It's just, it's made up. Well, um, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy is its own franchise now, and I guess you could do that, and you could have Hulk and the Guardians on this, on the Battle World, or whatever you call it. Right. No, the Battle World is from Secret Wars. But whatever it is, Planet Hulk, I guess is what we'll call it. A Scar? No, Scar is his kid. I don't know. But Planet Hulk was just great, and it's just the perfect length to do a movie of. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't suppose we'll ever do that. Because it would cost a gazillion dollars. And yeah, if Universal gets half your money, or, or is it all of your money? I mean, how does yeah, that work? Does Disney have works. a deal with Universal? Is it still Universal? It's just like, no, Hulk belongs to us. Yeah, I don't and know if how it so, works. F Spider Man and F the X Men and all that, you get Hulk back immediately. That should be your first priority. <laughs> a character that you have in all your movies and yet you don't own? Yeah, I don't know what the deal is. Anyway, I'm sorry. That, that was a tangent. You guys are ready to go go home, huh? You don't want to hear us talking about Avengers anymore. But, I mean, I could talk for another hour about it if you want to. And I talk about how I don't really care about any other movies coming out this summer. Not even Ant-Man? Not Wait Ant-Man. a minute. What about Tomorrowland? I'll see Tomorrowland and I'll see Ant-Man, but I don't care. Like, yeah, there was a, a Mission Impossible trailer before Avengers. And I'll see that, too, but I don't have to. You almost peed yourself over the Tomorrowland trailer. We're going to go see it, and we're going to do what that gets my goat about it. Well, I, I believe in Tomorrowland, the fact that it's not a sequel or worse, a reboot of something that just happened. I, I can really appreciate that. And, I mean, it looks fun and magical, and, and I believe it's Brad Bird doing that, and he's got a really good track record, um, Incredibles notwithstanding. Yeah? That didn't bother you at all that I said that. I don't understand. Well, I was just saying Incredibles was a really bad movie. Yeah? You're going to let that stand, too? (laughs) All right, guys. Uh, He's really got his Hulk side under control. He's Apparently, his secret is he's no longer always angry. I'm never angry, and I can't get it up and angry. (laughs) Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Last thing I'm going to (laughs) mention... The scene where they all try and lift Thor's hammer uh-huh. was just delightful. Oh, yeah. And then it's paid off at the end of the movie. Oh, my gosh, dude. Uh, that moment where Vision is just able to, uh, he hands Thor his hammer. Here you go. When they're all deciding whether they should trust him. <laughs> Holy crap, man. That was brilliant, dude. I mean, it's a seemingly throwaway scene yeah, where they're all trying like to just, hold It's something the that they do for fun. I did love the part where Captain America goes to pick it up, and it jiggles. It moves a little bit, and you see Thor's face where he's like suddenly, oh, crap. He may actually, oh, oh, okay, good. Because, <laughs> you know, he's like worried. He's like, oh, yeah, Captain America's a really good guy. He may well just pick that thing up. But, yeah, when they do pay it off, that was, that was uh, pretty brilliant. And yeah, I wanted to do that exact same thing when Spider-Man first joined the Avengers and had him be like, Thor, Thor, here's your hammer. And he just hands it to him. And the other Avengers are like, oh, my God, did you see that? And Peter, because he's not been in the Avengers, has no idea what he's just done. And they, it was basically the same thing, except it was better because he was like, he was Spider-Man trying to... Con- you like him. No, no, this vision was better because he was trying to explain to them that you can trust me that I'm not like Ultron. And that, and it's like, well, you know, there's no way you're going to be able to convince these guys. 
And then you're like, okay, here, Thor, take your hammer. And they're like, oh, okay, never mind. Yes, you, we're convinced. Yeah, we're on your side. <laughs> I thought that, that was better than how I... I'm, with me, it would have been a joke. But with Joss Whedon, it was a joke slash, you know, a pivotal turning point for all those characters. Yeah. Very well done. I wonder sometimes how some of those things come up. They just have a... a I mean, with TV shows, you know, they have like a writer's room where they have a bunch of writers and they plan this crap out together and then they assign the stories off to certain writers to actually write the episode. And then creator or whatever will go back through and, you know, do a pass to really make it, you know, be his show kind of a thing. But uh, how does it work with something like a movie? Because generally you have a credit for, you know, the writer unless... It's a disaster, and then you'll have four or five credits for the writer. And that's just because they hand it around to this person and that person and the other person until, you know, it's turned to crap. Well, lots of times. Like on Captain America 2, Joss took a pass at that. On Captain America 1, he was first hired when they were writing Captain America 1. Right. And he took a pass on that, but he's uncredited. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, Drew Goddard got a copy of the script and... The Russo brothers got a copy of the script, and all these guys got Avengers too, and they all made their little notes. And it's like, what about this joke? And I mean, I, I'm sure Joss is brilliant, but can you come up with 27 entertaining ways that Hawkeye fires an arrow? <laughs> you know what I mean? And he does. Yeah. There, there's a point where he stabs a guy in the face with an arrow, where he's you know he shoots one backwards. Scarlet and, Witch right in her forehead with that one. Yeah. And she's about to zap him with the crazy spell. Too. And he has that thing where he's like, "I've been hypnotized before. Yeah. I'm not a fan, or I didn't deal did, with mind control already. Not a fan. Yeah, it's just all that stuff. And and you know, I don't know. I mean, it could be that Joss started thinking about this years ago. And he just had a notebook filled with, like, little lines that Tony could say or funny things that Thor could say or bits of business. Enough for five or six Avengers movies. And then when he was compiling the script, okay, here's a chance for this and here's that. Oh, and the mind control line. Where, where was that? Flip, flip, flip. Here it is. But had experience with mind control. Not a fan. All right. And he puts it in there. I mean, I would imagine that's what you do if you got a project this big. But I, I don't know. You know, back in the Disney days, he would have... All of his animators or whatever, any anybody who came up with a gag or a joke that he could put in there, you know, he would give them, what was the deal? Of some tiny little amount of money, but back in the Depression, it was a ton of money. It was like $20 for any gag or joke that we put in in our movie. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bunch of people at Marvel that try and do that with Joss, although it just seems more likely that Joss would do that for other people. <laughs> yeah. It's some really good storytelling when you uh, when you think about it. it. Makes you feel like you're not worthy when you're thinking about writing your first novel, and then you're like, "Oh yeah, that's something, that's way better than anything that I could come up for the gauntlet." Is that what your novel is going to be? <laughs> you heard it here first. Folks. I don't think so, but I don't know. But yeah, just like there's one moment when when Rhodey has like taken out a couple of the Ultronites, and he goes, "See, Tony, I can hold my own." And Tony says, if we make it out of this, buddy, I'll hold your own. And that's better than anything I could have written. <laughs> it was just a cute little throwaway, funny, somewhat homoerotic line. And I dug it. You know, I guess I need to throw more, a few more of those in there. But see, the, the screenplay is different than what we're doing with our novel, isn't it? Because you want every single line. You want to go over it and over it and over it and do like 17 drafts, right? With a screenplay? Yeah. And we're not supposed to do that with a novel because, well, because we're not being played $20 million. <laughs> yeah, right. That's probably the difference. But, yeah, it's it's cool. It is cool to get to see good examples of good storytelling like that. Anything else before we go? Did you want to talk about the romance between Banner and... Uh... Well, I was curious if that worked for you, if you were interested in it. I was. I liked that scene at the very beginning at the bar where they're sort of flirting and she just basically comes out and says, there's a guy I like and he's really dorky and I like him. And he's just like, uh, he's trying to figure out what the angle is, I think. Right. And uh, I mean, I I don't know if this, I, I think it's probably fair to say that the Black Widow in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is how she is in the comics. Because in the comics, she's slept with anybody and everybody. That's one of her abilities. 
it's she's the the ultimate spy and uses that to you know get into people's good graces or their safes or whatever the deal is and of all the avengers banner is easily the schlubbiest one <laughs> and yet she seems interested in him and not the others that is really cool and and Dan's just like what well, and it's because of uh you know, his trying to control, he doesn't want to hurt people. Yeah. He doesn't, you know, that kind of thing. I, I thought that that basically was... basically the nice guy. You know, all these other guys are like the handsome, studly, tough guys. And, you know, every one of them will give her a run for their money. But he's just the nice guy. He's the... And there's that saying about how nice guys finish last... But I think it's for oh, certain... A truism, it's not a saying. Oh, okay. Sorry. I think it's for certain people, though. You know, the kind of person that is 100% confident in themselves, like Black Widow is, is not the kind of person who's going to need to be with the studliest, tallest, buffest dude. You know, they don't need that to make themselves feel good or special or right. She's 100% on her self-esteem, and therefore she can just like somebody because he's the nice guy and doesn't need the, you know. Seems like maybe that's what the attraction is to in that. I don't know. It's interesting. A little weird because, yeah, he is the schlubbiest guy. <laughs> he's, he's Mark Ruffalo, who's he's a nice guy. He plays kind of nice guys and all the stuff he's in because he can't really pull off much else he can't pull off a tough guy or a i don't know maybe he could do some other odd roles well he seems just like a nice sweet ordinary guy mm -hmm. and you know maybe he's super super handsome you know in a room full of ordinary guys but on a movie when you're surrounded by like we were talking about with daredevil chris hemsworth for goodness sake he's a schlub and I just thought that that was neat. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they'll develop more of this relationship with him and Natasha. Uh, I think no, but I don't. I, I don't know. Well, I think there will be something because I don't think the Hulk is gone forever. I think he'll be back. If not in Infinity War one, it'll be in Infinity War two. Because we want to see him pound on Thanos, don't we? Yeah, because he, he will be back for for that. Eventually, I think, and when that does, when he does come back, I think we'll get some kind of a. Uh, there'll have to be something with her, with her, unless she's like dead by then or something, which I doubt. Did you, for a moment, think that they were going to kill her off? I started to think they were. I did. I worried about that, especially because of that romance. When you get a romance in a show like that, you're you're almost asking for it. It's like the horror movie, you know. <laughs> It's like you slept with somebody, now you're going to die. Yeah, I mean, you, there's, there's that tragic thing. Instead, it turned out to be somebody else, who I guess we've already mentioned. So I'll say it turned out to be Quicksilver. Well, did you think they were going to kill Hawkeye? I, I did. Like, they set up this whole family thing, and we already saw them have like their little goodbye. And I thought, Yeah, uh -oh. I did consider it might be Hawkeye as well, and we get the scene where, oh, and they cry, and all the kids come and cry, or whatever. So I did worry about that as well. You don't really worry about the big four. No, because they've got their own movies. They've got their out. own movies, and they're basically invincible. To, but yeah, the littler ones, the weaker ones, as Ultron, I believe, said. You kind of worry a little bit about them. Instead, it turned out to be the Korean doctor. She was lovely, but uh, she had to go. <laughs> I think I've talked uh, enough. I, I appreciate the people that listened. And somebody just today said that they couldn't wait to hear what we thought of the movie. And that made me feel good. Yeah. Hopefully uh, this was worth listening to for for Jeff Carls. Um, Is that who it was? Oh, you poor bastard, <laughs> man. I'm sorry. I, I should have prepared something funny for you. I just... Uh, and happy birthday to you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah... We probably need to wrap it up. I'm supposed to be home here soon anyways because my wife needs to go to work. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and call it an evening. Go out and check out the movie if you haven't. But if you haven't, why did you listen to this? We just ruined it for you. But you can tell us what you guys thought and what things we didn't pick up on. 
I'm sure there were Easter eggs in there. I mentioned Ulysses' claw to you. I don't know if I mentioned it on the podcast. But there are probably other Easter eggs in there that I'll pick up on on the third or fourth time we watch through. And if you guys want to mention those in the comments, that would be really cool. Or in the forum. It would be cool to, to hear. So yeah, head over there and let's talk more about it. And we'll see you guys next time on uh, That Gets My Vote. Yep. Good night, uh, Avengers. I- that Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. Boy, they must really think a lot of themselves. And I just love that. It's like I was complaining about on... Was it, did I do this on the show where I complained about Flash? I don't think I did, did I? On Flash, they had... You know, they have the guy, Cisco on the Flash TV show who always comes up with the names for everybody. He, he was the guy that... I, I think he probably named the Flash the Flash, but because before that they were calling him the Streak or something like that on the blog that iris makes but uh he always comes up and then they had this episode where the bad guy's name they came up with was the bug-eyed bandit yeah perfect oh we nailed it no but see you you (laughs) did not quite do justice to how stupid that was the adam comes up with it at the exact same moment of oh i got a kick-ass name and they both at the same time say bug-eyed bandit yeah and you had warned me that that was coming. And <laughs> I you just... said, make sure you have nothing you can throw at the television set because I know you and you will throw something. Make sure the you're not set. drinking because you will do a spit take. And uh, it's somehow, yeah. well, I mean, you made it sound a little bit more, you know, like a couple of mongloids coming up with something. But the fact that there's like, yeah, oh, cool name. And then they just go on that. Nobody else in the room calls him on it. Yeah, it's a terrible name. And that's the thing is, especially in D.C., they have tons and tons of terrible bad guy names. And he pulls out Bug-Eyed Bandit, which sucks. (laughs) And I just want him one time to, to basically turn and wink at the camera and say, okay, that sucks. You know, like if he'd said, oh, yeah, Bug-Eyed Bandit. And then somebody said, whoa, what? And he goes, oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry. That was, give, give me a little bit. I'll come up with something better. You know, if he just did something like that, that would be awesome. Well, they do that with the Fudge and Ant-Man trailer. Yeah, exactly. In fact, I think they've done it twice. It's too late to change the, the name. Yeah, because it seems like I saw another trailer where he says, I'm Ant-Man. Yeah, sorry about the name. Or whatever, where it's just like, yeah, okay, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, dude, I thrilled when somebody called him Hawkeye in this movie. But that's exactly what Hawkeye did, basically, when he says, I have a bow and arrow. <laughs> it makes no sense. He's turning to the camera, winking and saying, yeah, I know. <laughs> Silly, huh? All right, back to the show. Uh, maybe someday Flash will be as cool as that. <laughs> <laughs> and take my advice. Hopefully Joss is listening. Wait, Joss isn't involved in Flash. Joss is not involved in anything anymore. Jeff Loeb, no, he's only on... He's on Marvel Television. Yeah, I don't know who's doing uh, Flash. Oh, well, somebody who's doing Flash, listen to the show and rip off my dialogue, okay? Just rip it off. I don't care. I won't press any charges or try and sue you or any of that crap. (laughs) I won't try and sue you for stealing my idea like idiots sometimes do. Now, if they had called Batrock Batrock the Leaper, would that have been even close to Bug-Eyed Bandit? <laughs> That's pretty bad. Okay, oh, here's one. There was an episode where Kyle MacLachlan puts together like a, a half-assed Brotherhood of Evil Mutants on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And one of the guys he brought on was Angmar the Screamer. And they didn't ever call him Angmar the Scream. Yeah? And I was just This like, was on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? It was. On oh, oh, oh. You didn't that see was, that one because you I don't d- watch the show. You have a two-year-old. But, You're talking uh, about the... But they were on a football Sky's field. father gets together the... Mm-hmm. Yeah, he put together a bunch Angmar the Screamer was uh, one of them. You don't remember it? Well, I they remember. 
the episode, but I don't know who any of those people were. <laughs> well, they, yeah, there's the one like, that had like knives for hands or whatever. Right, but there was one, and he had this covering on his mouth yeah. that they made him wear all the time. And when he took it off, he went ah, and like sounds came yeah. out. You know, that's Angmar the Screamer. Sweet. Was it? Did they call him Angmar? Is his they name did Angmar? call him Angmar. Yeah. Uh, you know, you said that DC has some really lame named characters. Marvel does they too. They do, yeah. but they're charmingly lame. I think. <laughs> Like Volstag the Enormous. Now, I guess we've seen Volstag in a couple of movies, but they've never called him Volstag the Enormous. Yeah. They haven't called any of them the whatever, though. All of those people have... Monikers? What do they call that? It's a particular name. I can't think of the word of it, though. It's like Hercules the Swift-Footed or whatever. <laughs> cool. Well, you know, they uh, somewhere, somebody must have called Captain America the First Avenger. I saw a commercial for Daredevil, and it called him... Daredevil, the first defender. And yes, I did throw something through the television. <laughs> and it was your son. Oh, man. I, well, he was there. But uh, He's not going to take kindly to that. Um, You know, that very first moment we see Ultron, when he's all foobar and crawling into the party or whatever, uh, I hope that gives your two-year-old tons of nightmares. Just like a spaz load of nightmares. Because you saw the movie and you still took him to it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah! I hope so. Yeah, it was interesting when those, what were they called? The Iron Legion or something like that? Yeah, they, they had... flying in, the one guy who had his sp face all burned. They had Spader's looked, voice. He looked like Ultron already just when he came flying into the building. I was like, oh, there's Ultron. Oh, when they, and they, they went in and landed space. and took his faceplate off and all that jazz. 